Hi, it's Linda Fox. I'm senior reporter with Focus Wire, and I'm at the Arrival Conference. I'm with Chow Chow, and he's co-founder of Get Your Guide. Thanks for joining us, Ted. Thanks for having me. Um, would you just start up with giving us a kind of um, lowdown of the sort of general startup scene in Europe at the moment? Because I know you follow it quite closely. Mm. Absolutely. So I think startups in Europe get a bad rep because we don't do a great job in, in PR. Mm -hmm. And so if you go back to the history of uh, European startups, you have all these amazing e-commerce companies, you have payment companies, you have music companies, so really tons of IPO, lots of value created for consumers and shareholders. So I think we just need to do a better job in telling that story. And okay. we've seen Berlin now really stepping up. It's now, I think, established itself as one of the, probably along with London and Paris and Berlin, kind of this triumvirate of, of amazing um, cities to do a company in. And there's just also a lot more funding flowing in. So I think talent, money, some success is really paving the way for also for the next generation. So funding is an interesting one because there, there was a sort of view that, that the early stage funding was getting harder. Is mm. that something you've seen? So I think what's happening right now is the very early stage, the seed rounds are getting easier because now you have folks who've had access, who've had successful companies and, and are now you know, taking some of the money and reinvesting into founders. Putting it back into the industry. Exactly. Sure. And, and because they love it, it's, it's their calling, they love tech, they love putting into young founders, maybe they see themselves in them. What's getting a little bit harder is certainly the Series A, maybe the Series B stage. So okay. I think you can get you know, you know, a couple million in the Series A funding, but really to get that 10, 20 million into a growth scale, that's definitely difficult. Um, it gets a little bit easier in the very growth stage, so for sure. very much proven companies. And if you look at the amount of capital in the funding markets, a disproportionate amount right now is going to very later stage companies. Mm -hmm. And we just think that, um, you know, ultimately Europe still has to prove of not just how much total funding can we raise, but also how many, you know, scale ups can we actually build in terms of sheer quantity. Okay. Now, talking about growth stage, you yourself had quite a significant round of funding. And then you've got the likes of Clute coming in, mm. and they've had even more significant rounds right, of funding, right. so to speak. So, yeah. does that make you think that you should change your strategy, or what does that make you think? So, I think if we take a step back and look at the total amount of funding raised in this broader in destination experience activity space relative to the size of the market, it, I would actually say it's underfunded. Okay. Right. So if, if we say probably less than, half, less than a billion in total funding for all companies, just looking at startup fundings because we don't consider right now what's the internal investment of OTAs going to this space. Sure. That's also significant. But then you look at the total market of 150 billion and you know, we think there will actually be more funding, more investment by both startups but also by OTAs just investing more. Um, I think a lot of companies are now seeing not only is the space moving away from just a pure attached ancillary product, it's now moving into the center of at the heart of travel. And I think more importantly, if we just fast forward 10, 20 years, obviously our belief and our mission is that this becomes very much at the core of when people think of travel companies, they think of the company that provided me with these memorable Instagrammable and 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 you know you know um, memories and moments and pictures of things they've done. So we think we will get there. And so if you think that you know companies who are experienced first can maybe later on even do other things, then yeah, I think uh, there will be even more investment broadly into this space. Okay, good. So. Do you think that, you know, when, when somebody like and Luke comes in and they're, they're being quite noisy, does that make you think that you'd like to, you know, go to Asia and, and maybe not necessarily challenge them there, but be a player there yourselves? So I think one of the things that you always learn as an entrepreneur very early on is focus. And there's always these, you know, in Germany there's a saying, there's, you know, you don't want to dance at 10 weddings, uh, but really focus on what you're good at. So what a lot of people what well, you probably know, but what of people actually don't know is that Europe is the most important market in travel. Sure. And there's a reason why in the history of travel, from Cogs and Kings in the 1850s up until the, the, the TUIs, the Booking.coms, um, Skyscanner versus Kike, all the major travel companies in the world were always European. And there's many reasons for that. Number one is it, we have the most, not most, but I would say arguably, probably the most amount of visitable cities to see, the Milans, the Parises, the Romes, the Londons. And also, you know, Europeans travel a lot. We have a lot of vacation. Uh, it's easy to get from, you know, Berlin uh, with EasyJet or Ryanair or some other low coster to, to Rome, right? You can get there in two hours. So mm -hmm. it's very convenient. We have a lot of vacation. Travel is very important for us. So, so we like where we are in Europe and we're making great inroads in the US as well. So, you know, if we could only own those two markets, 
we're a happy camper. Would be, yeah. That said, we are definitely also now expanding into Asia, and we have been investing into Asia for the last couple of years. So. Um, one of the things in travel is you have to consider source market, destination markets, and Asia as a destination is already a huge part of our portfolio, and uh, we're definitely increasing our investment also there, making sure that everybody who goes to Asia has a great experience. Okay. So one of the developments you announced last year was branded tours. Tell us yep. how that's going for you. So we're very happy with how it's been going. It's definitely been... What's it like trying to get that across to your consumers in terms of visibility? Oh, absolutely. So the genesis of the branded tours was actually consumers writing reviews saying, I love my Get Your Guide tour mm -hmm. or my Get Your Guide tour guide was not that great. So this was actually based on consumers telling us that they don't see a difference between booking on Get Your Guide or booking a Get Your Guide tour. So we just said, well, instead of trying to educate customers, which is really not our remit, we should be embracing the fact that people are associating our brand with their memories. So that was really the genesis of, okay. of the branded tours. And it's going very well. We've now tens of thousands of customers at this point. We'll definitely pass the 100,000 customers threshold this year of people on Originals Tours. And the, the feedback is very positive. So the average consumer rating is higher than on the other tours. And the reason for that is we work A, closely with our local operators to design the tours from the ground up. So based on what we know, the qualitative, the quantitative research, the millions of reviews people have left, the tens of million customer calls and, and emails we've gotten, using all this data, making sense of what do customers really care about, what are things that make them really happy, what are some table stakes, and what are them, some things that really annoy them and just working on some of those core basics to make the tour better, you can already improve the experience a lot. So for this year, definitely improving, investing even more in improving that experience, but also then scaling into many more destinations because we do want more customers to experience these brand tours. Okay, final question, and without being too self-serving, the mm. contentious issue of the conference is about OTAs owning the distribution and the tech yeah. side of tours and activities. So as I say, without kind of mentioning, yeah. get your eye too much, what, what's your view on that? Well, I think we have two views. One view is what we have mm -hmm. as, an, as an OTA, but you said yep. Not leave, leave that aside. Yet. So I think if I'm an operator, the, the, the question I should be asking myself is, should I really give all my data uh, to these you know, monopolies? Mm -hmm. And does that really serve my long-term interest? So, sure. so my recommendation and our recommendation is we don't think it's a long-term interest of operators to A, give away all their data uh, to, to, these, to these companies. And number two, because you think about, will they be optimizing the distribution in the tech for their own channel? Or will they be optimizing the distribution for all channels? So okay. I think it's much more in the interest of the operator and this is the reality of travel is that you always have multi-distribution. Exactly. You always, you know, there's very hard to have exclusivity, yeah, you have right? To hedge your bets. As a hotel, you work with everybody, right? And so, you know, I think this is definitely a huge question. So on the data front and on the distribution front, is it in your interest? And look, you know, this is a debate that's come up uh, in the consumer space with Facebook. Facebook is free. Right? And and when you think about it now, people are now realizing, oh, they were using actually my data. And but now I'm really locked in, so I'm not saying you know those are sometimes very good systems, but I think you know we prefer to keep the interests clean. Uh, I think reservation systems should service the needs of the supplier, sure. independent of who they work with. And you know OTAs, we should focus on matching some consumers with operators yeah. to create more bookings. Okay, oh, we we'll have to leave it there. Thank you very much. Thank you, Linda.